Okay, now, so make, make your notes now. Yeah? You have to know these definitions because we will come back to that again and again. So our point estimator, or beta, hat is distributed as normal, multivariate normal, with expectation of the true parameter beta and the variance covariance matrix defined as sigma squared times x transpose x inverted. And this guy here is also estimated, right? So our point estimator is multivariate normally distributed with expectation of beta and variance covariance matrix defined as here. That's an important result. Another thing that is now important to, to understand or important to note is, so, so we know, so we, we know that, that this guy here in this, in this equation, this epsilon times epsilon, epsilon prime, I, let's, let me just take away this here. So we know that uh, this guy here somewhat catches the, the variance of our residuals. Yeah? So we, we said already earlier that our residual, res residuals need to be, um, need to follow a certain distribution, right? So our epsilon t needs to be sort of a, a, a white noise process, yeah? There should be no systematic, it should be circulate around zero and the variance should be the same of our residuals, yeah? So these are very strong assumptions, yeah? And uh, in real life, obviously, if you have financial markets, have you ever seen financial markets that are uh, well behaving? I, I haven't, so uh, so obviously this, this, this assumption is, is very strong and um, what we can or what we can or what we at least the minimum that we uh, need to need to have uh, the, the, the minimum requirement in order to have any kind of t statistic or you know in order to make any inference we we need to ensure that our that the variance is somehow converging. Yeah? So in real life, it, it could be that the uh, process of our residuals looks very different. Yeah? It, uh, it, it could be that it's something like this. So that it's basically, it's, it's, that it's not well behaving, but in the very long term, it converges. It converges to something that, that has bounds. Now that is somehow sort of a bounded process, okay? It, has, it, it somehow converges to something uh, finite, okay? And then what people then do is basically they redefine uh, the estimation procedure and uh, people can show, people have shown that, that as long as the variance exists and it is finite and somehow converges in the very long term, then you can argue with the law of large numbers. 
Uh, so so uh, we, we, we can basically proxy, proxy the, the, the uh, variance and uh, as long as, it's, as it exists. So, and, and, and that's now the important issue here. So there are namely processes where the variance doesn't exist. Okay. So, which is a problematic thing. So, the criticism from uh, uh, Nassim Taleb, um, who has written the uh, best-selling book uh, The Black Swan, and many other books as well, and he has also several, plenty of, of, of published, published research papers, and uh, so he has a sort of criticism because he argues that in uh, financial markets um, there are circumstances where simply the, the, the variance doesn't exist. Yeah? So, for instance, um, there are papers who argue that the, uh, if you take daily stock returns, so if you have the normal distribution which looks a little bit like this, Okay. And uh, this bell-shaped bell curve, and there are um, there are research papers that argue that uh, daily stock returns are distributed; uh, they follow a t-distribution with three degrees of freedom. Yeah. So, uh, which means it's it maybe look a little bit like this. Yeah. So, if the blue bell-shaped curve is normally distributed, the red one is fat-tailed, so-called fat-tailed. Yeah? So, what you see is mm, you have more probability mass in the extremes. And if you make the calculation, you can look it up in, the, in, the, uh, in Google as well or, or in, 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 the, in the internet, how the variance is uh, defined for the t-distribution, but if you have a t-distribution with two or three degrees of freedom, obviously the variance doesn't exist. Uh, the variance is not defined. Yeah? So, which means that this process can, can have extreme outliers. Yeah? So, the, 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 the variance doesn't converge to something, to anything that is finite. Okay? So, but what does that mean? So, it means obviously if the variance doesn't exist, there is no t-statistic. If the, if the residual variance yeah, is, is, is not defined, there is no t-statistic that, that basically um, that, that, that is of, uh, of any use. Yeah? So, so you can only use this, this formula in a world where at least the variance exists. Okay? And actually Nassim Taleb in his new book he actually defines or he, he argues that the uh, residual process should have a kurtosis of less than 4.2 if, if the kurtosis is less than 4.2 um, things converge okay things things converge uh, towards normal towards the normal distribution. So that's a strong assumption and in what follows, so we in this course here we will assume that we have a kurtosis of, of less than 4.2. You, know, you might remember that the normal distribution has a kurtosis of 3. Whenever the kurtosis is larger than 3, we have a little bit fatter tails than the normal distribution, so we have more prob probability mass, we have more like the likelihood of outliers, of, of, of extreme observations is, is higher. And if it's too high, yeah, if it's too high, then obviously we have no t-statistics. Or the t-statistics are, are, are not defined. And even if, if we have a t-statistic, we, we can always calculate some, some value here, obviously, but it's meaningless, okay? because it obviously is just sample specific. And that's a general problem in, in finance, obviously. That we have a, that people run models, and out of samples, these models doesn't work, and this is exactly the problem, because obviously 
uh, if you have something here that is not defined, yeah, then ob obviously everything becomes uh, nonsense. So uh, this is just something that I would like to add here. And uh, what, we, what we will do next is we will have a look at how, the, how we can uh, adjust this, uh, the uh, covariance matrix of our beta parameter if, the, uh, if, there's a if there's a certain dependency structure in the variance, which we often see in uh, financial markets. But in what follows, we assume at least that the kurtosis is less than the 4.2. Yeah? So we assume that the, that the variance exists.